All righty. Good morning, everybody. We made it up here to the Koala Wash, picking up our trailer so we can go get our load. And uh, we got to get this thing all hooked up and everything. Lights working. So let's, uh, let's wrap our red line here. And then let's pull our blue one off and let's give it a good little, little wrap. That'll work. Airlines off the catwalk, so you ain't got to get in trouble for that. Uh, I think the trailer's sitting pretty good out there where it's at. I don't need to, I don't think I need to slide it forward any. We do need to check over the trailer, make sure it's dry. I've noticed the, uh, the dome lid is open, so hopefully it didn't, uh, Hopefully it didn't rain in it, and get too much water in it over the weekend. Um, put this up in the truck. And I need to flip these placards. My ABS lights on because I ain't got no air going to the trailer right now. Once I get air going to the trailer, it'll it'll turn off and do all that but so far so good with the new truck here it rides like a dream it's very very smooth having that air ride front axle on that thing it's very very smooth me and my daughter good grief look how close they put my dog on a trailer right here I guess let me go hook on let me go put some air to it and uh, pull it out there on the road or something. Yeah, me and my daughter right there, we just had us a scare. Had a dig um pickup truck, oh, not pickup truck, a little a van, van truck pulled out in front of us. Uh, ran a red light uh, in front of us and we almost t-boned that thing if uh, if I could pull video off of that uh, That dash camera up there. I'll pop it up in there right here But it scared the ever-loving mess out of us didn't it? Sucker. Ugh. You gotta always be paying attention though. Alright. Wheels are rolling. Alright. This guy just pulled out the way. He got me way too close to that trailer to the right side of me, so we're just gonna pull out here. Finish up looking down in the trailer and all that stuff. Now the ride of this truck right here has been absolutely fantastic. It it didn't take long to get used to the automatic. It's pretty it's pretty simple. What you think? Yeah. About the ride of it. It's smooth. Smooth. It's very smooth. Which is weird because the shifter's not here anymore. It's <laughs> just weird because they're in a shifter. Alright. Let's go ahead and just back up down the hill here. So we got uh, we got to be over there. Our appointments for 12 o'clock. The K met to load up a product that I ain't loaded yet, and uh, it's called uh, uh, the place we're going to is in High Point, South, uh, High Point, North Carolina. 
and our delivery ain't till Wednesday morning. It's Monday right now. So I don't know exactly if we're gonna do all the running today. We're gonna give them a call, see if they'll take us early because I can get over there tomorrow before, before all the closing time stuff. Why don't this one right here stay in? I want the, that one to stay in. Uh, anyways, we can get there tomorrow before before closing time to, to unload. So we're just going to have to see if they'll allow us to do that or not. If not, see the ABS light don't went off. If not, the uh, we are going to just take our time and just ease through the day and uh, stop early. That way we can take off early and get on through Atlanta early because we got to go through Atlanta. Uh, Placard. Trying to think of what all I need to do here. These guys usually have to flip these placards and stuff, but some guys, they just don't. So we have to do it ourselves when we get here. Uh, looks pretty doggone dry down here. It's all opened up. What is that? There's something black in there. By a hose or something? Okay, up oh, there it is. Huh, piece of hose or something. I'm off a water hose. That looks pretty clean to me. Hopefully, the top of the trailer is like that. About the vent line. Yeah, vent line's pretty. Vent line's pretty dry. Let's get on top of the trailer and check it out. Oh yeah, we party dry. Y'all hear that echoing? Pretty dry. Oh, come on, I'll work for me here. I like it when it's like that. Yeah, I guess we'll give us a little tire kick real fast. And then we'll be on our way. But yeah, so far, man, this this new truck, man, I'm so, so excited about it. It is just absolutely a comfortable ride. It uh, it took a little bit to get used to the automatic this morning, but I think I'm already used to it. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. What's up? Let's see here. Make sure our detergent wash and dry. All right, let's roll. I got a fake sometimes. I'm shifting the gear here. <laughs> uh, no, this is actually really nice, y'all. This thing is, it's easy. Just put that thing in drive and go. I guess we're gonna find out on this first load if we need to slide that fifth wheel up a little bit. Uh, just depends on how it rides, you know. I still can't see that light on the driver's side of the trailer when I went to Superior last week. I had them change that light on the driver's side of the trailer back there. Uh, the red one at the back of the trailer. And I still can't see it. I can see the one. I can see the red light in the passenger side, but I can't see it on the driver's side. So maybe maybe that little dent in that fender back there has got it blocked a little bit. Maybe I need to get my hammer out and just kind of tap on it, straighten that fender up. Put your seatbelt on, baby. Come on, get off of there.
All right. We're going to run to the, the little truck stop over here in Minden. And uh, like I said, we're going to get out, check the trailer one more time. We're just going to check the bottom. I don't need to check the top. It's all dry up there. I just want to check the neck of it. Make sure it ain't wet. Let Bella out. Let her use the bathroom. Let my daughter run in the store use the bathroom. And then we're going to get on over to Cotton Valley. Hopefully get this thing loaded. It's a beautiful morning out this morning. See the sun starting to blind us now. It's uh, 78 degrees today at 6.49 a.m. I believe. That's what the truck says anyways. Well, I don't know. It says 6.47 right there and 6.49 over here. So what time is it? 6.47. So I need to change my time on this one right here. But anyways, yeah, this thing is uh, a whole lot more quieter. Don't hardly make no rattling or nothing. Uh, we do have one little noise back there, and I think it comes from that closet right there. So we're going to have to figure that out eventually riding down the road. But, uh, yeah, what you think about it so far? Yeah? Sam, which is my daughter right here, she wanted to ride one time before before school started up. Uh, she's got what band camp? Yeah. Band camp starts up in a couple weeks. Uh, not next week, but the next. Couple weeks. Yep. Yeah. So she's got band camp starting up, but she wanted to ride before band camp started. My wife was a little jealous because she gets to ride a new truck and my wife had to ride an old one last week. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so we're going to take a trip out there to High Point, North Carolina, to Exalta uh, Coating Systems or something like that. All right, let's check it all out real fast and let's see what she looks like. Come on, now open up here. Yeah, I ain't got no fluid in that, so we're all good to go on that part. We got a towel out here to wipe her off with. I can see her little paws are already wet, so this grass has got dew all on it. It rained up here yesterday. She fell in a hole Huh? She fell in a hole, huh? All right, we're gonna get this done here and get on up there to Calumet. All right, y'all, we made it over here to the loading rack. We've been here at the loading rack. I've been on the phone. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we've, we've already got loaded and everything. We're just waiting on the phone call to get our paperwork. And this one right here just got up and took a nap. <laughs> Why, why is it when you when your kids or your wife or somebody like that wants to ride with you, these things right here, they want to go to sleep all of a sudden, huh? I'm talking to you. I woke up at 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> she ain't used to that. She's not a morning person like I am. She's like her mama and likes to sleep in half the morning. But, uh, but yeah, we're, we're still sitting there waiting on them to give us a call to get paperwork. I figured I'd show y'all the refrigerator set up is that I don't have a big refrigerator in the floor anymore. This refrigerator right here is just a little bit smaller. So, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to show y'all what we got up in that thing. What you think about the new truck, Bella? Huh? What you think about it? <laughs> yeah, roo, roo, roo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For starters, I love how the refrigerator is hidden up in here. It's just absolutely beautiful. All right. So, uh, we got us some cheese right here to snack on got us some waters in the door like i said this is uh this is a whole lot smaller setup so uh we got us some sausage some jalapeno cheddar and some uh bacon cheddar we got us some hamburger patties some bacon and cheddar ha hamburger patties we got us one ribeye down here we got us bacon all right here we got us some hamburger patties right here and then we just separate our bacon up that way we can just grab one pack of bacon oh i feel ice is it ice? Something like that. We got us some eggs. We got us some string cheese. 
because that one likes to eat string cheese for snacks. And then we got our freezer, which is keeping three steaks frozen. So it's working out just fine like it needs to be. Just fine. Got us a bag of boiled eggs right here we've been snacking on. And then we got us some uh, salmon right here. Then we got us some uh, pork rinds. And that's basically gonna be our snacks and stuff for the week, huh? Huh? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's gonna basically be our snacks for the week, huh? Yep. All right, y'all. There's our bill of lading for this one right here. We're gonna flip our plaquettes back to 1268. I should have just left them like that. I don't exactly know what this stuff is that we're hauling, but I do know it's placarded 1268. So we're gonna flip them back over. I could have just left them like they was when we left tank wash, but I wasn't hazardous at the time, so you can't really be doing all that kind of stuff. I'll tell you one thing, it is hot out here. The humidity right now is just absolutely terrible. Oh, you sucker, come on now. Come on, come on, come on. 12, 60, 8. All right, let's get this finished up. Okay, our dispatch says that we're going to be delivering 6 to 4 on the 3rd. Uh, 6 to 12 on the 3rd. But it says on the paperwork right here, 6 to 2 o'clock p.m. is the receiving hours Monday through Thursday. So I'm going to call them up because I know that we can be there before 2 o'clock tomorrow. And I'm going to see if they'll go ahead and unload us tomorrow instead of Wednesday. Like I said last week. Name of the game. Get there, get it unloaded, get back, get another load, more money on a check, all that kind of stuff. So, we'll put in this bill of lading into my uh, tablet here. And then uh, we're going to get on the ride. Uh... We're just going to see how far we can make it today. we got about eight hours left that we can drive today. So uh, that should put us over to... That should put us over to... The newborn trunk stop over there in... Uh, Tallapoosa, Georgia, I guess is how you say that. So uh, we should be able to get there. Oh, you have a cancer day? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool.
Yeah, we kind of made a mess right there. Uh, the skillet fell over and dumped the egg out in the bottom of there. So I got to clean all that stuff up. When that steak right there gets done, but we're going to have us some eggs and some bacon tonight for supper. What's that, Biela? Boy, boy, boy. Along with that steak right there. We're only going to do one steak. We're going to cut it in half, slice it all up, and we're going to share tonight. I did bring us enough to uh, where we both have a steak. It's just we ain't been eating a lot here. Well, we've been eating more times a day, less throughout the day. So uh, we've been snacking on eggs and pork rinds and stuff all day long. So this right here is going to fill us up right here. But that's a pretty good looking steak right there so far. We did cut the bone off, all right? Cut the bone off the side of it already, just trying to cook a little bit of the meat. That way Bella can have the bone when it cools off. Good job, baby. Just give one or two of them and roll them up. Good So our idea is, is hopefully we're going to get there tomorrow about 10, 10 30-ish in the morning, hopefully, and hopefully we can get this thing unloaded tomorrow instead of Wednesday. I've tried calling these people all day long and can't get nobody to answer the telephone, can't get nobody to pick it up, can't get nobody to call me back. So, we're just going to show up over there and either they can unload us or they can tell us to wait until Wednesday morning. So that's what we're going to do. Y'all can't hear what she was saying. She's talking about this morning when that guy pulled out in front of us. He's scared the ever loving mess out of us. It's always important to pay attention to what's going on. I'm talking about from my perspective, because if I was playing on a phone or something like that, I could have easily totaled that truck out. But we need to just pay attention to what's going on because anything can happen at any moment. Like this morning. That was uh that was just absolutely crazy. Alright, Sam. What steak do you want? Huh? Grab them grab them tongues up there and you do it yourself. Turn this knife and stuff up. Get whatever you want. Good. Bella, sit. Sit. Good girl. Let's see if we can give Bella her, her bone now. Get it? <laughs> She's like, no. Get it? Get it? Get your bone. We was just gonna go to the truck stop at the next exit. Tallapoosa, Georgia, the newborn truck stop. And we was just gonna eat uh, leftovers tonight. But we just we, we decided to stop here at the Welcome Center because uh, I like to cook a fresh hot meal. What you do? Only on my uh, Yeah, he did. So in the morning we're going to get up, we're already in the uh, eastern time zone, 
So we're gonna get up in the morning about 3.45 or so. And we can roll out of here at about 4.20 or something. And then we're gonna get on the ride. And I don't, I don't plan on stopping until we get to the place to unload. And like I said just a while ago, hopefully, hopefully they'll unload us tomorrow. If not, then we did all this rushing for nothing. Well, she is chowing down on that bone over there. <laughs> so are we. We're going to finish chowing down. We're going to get everything cleaned up. We'll see y'all in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm trying to be a little bit more quieter. It's 3.30 in the morning out here. My daughter's in the truck sleeping, so I don't want to wake her up. But we got the motor turned off this morning. We're doing our pre-trip. Just checking everything out. Oh, looks good. We topped our washer fluid back off. There ain't nothing really else. I would like to clean the windows, but I'm pretty sure the windows are gonna get back gonna get back dirty within the first hundred miles so ain't no point in trying to clean it right now well that thing made a screech didn't it <laughs> but uh yeah so we got us about 20 more minutes or so and we'll be able to to get back on the road this morning uh we got about five hours and 45 minutes I'm going to say six hours until we get to the place to uh, hopefully, hopefully get unloaded. I don't know how many miles that is. Right now the temperature outside is about, it's about 80 degrees. The wind's blowing. It kind of, kind of feels like we're going to be coming into a storm or, or we got one brewing up behind us. All my lights are burning. See if I can figure out this light situation here. You see how the lights behind the fender right here? See how, see how the fender stuck out and the lights behind the fender? I can't see that. I cannot see that going down the road. But the other one over here is just fine. I can see the tip of it. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to just get me some uh, uh, some beehive lights to put on the end of the trailer so I can see them. Oil levels look good in the wheel hubs. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. All right, well. We're gonna uh, we're gonna jump back in the truck. We're gonna fire it up, and uh, most likely gonna get on down the highway.
Alright, we made it over here to this Exalta Exalta coating. Here in High Point, North Carolina. And they gave me a map here. Come in, make a lift, and we're going to see a guy named David. Uh, this is going to be Rodney, I believe. And then there's the boiler room. Room coming up to the gate right there. That's the boiler room, and then we're going to go right on the other side of that to the tank farm and see a man named David. So, uh, I finally got a hold of somebody and the girl gave me about three other numbers to try three different people. Still couldn't get a hold of nobody, so I just showed up. There's our man right there. David, I guess. Yeah. That's what it says on the name badge, anyway, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, what I got for. I ain't got no more tanks today. Yeah. Uh, I talked to uh, some lady up front because I couldn't ever get a hold of nobody yesterday about coming today. And then she gave me some other numbers to call some other guys. And I tried calling Kevin, tried calling Steve, Steve or somebody, and nobody had ever answered the phone for me. So the girl told me to just show up. And they, Shouldn't have to call my mother. Call so we're short. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hey, y'all come in. I am not. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you're not even to the bar. Right in the Take me, take me, take me. <laughs> I mean, he's here. We're going to him in the morning. He's going to be at home tomorrow. <laughs> Are you going to be here tomorrow? Okay, well, I'm going to be here at 5. So I'll probably have the inventory down at 5. Shoot, I'll probably have to up at 8. All right, then. I just wanted to make sure that everything was good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's the one with the Spin around up there. Yeah, 
Yeah. Go up here and see if you can back up. Spin around. Spin around. I'm going to still put you right here, but you'll be further that way. That's fine. And we're not supposed to get belly tankers in here. We do have an idea. Okay. <laughs> I put, I put some cash. Right. I have to go by the room. Yeah, I know what you mean by that. Yeah. You know what? They, they usually don't get belly trailers in here like mine. Mine's a center dump. Mm -hmm. They usually don't get them trailers in here. They unload them off the rear end of the trailer. We don't have none of them. We got belly dump trailers. Yeah, he's on the loose. We just got to turn around. He's already got me hooked up. And uh, we're already unloading. He had to run a sample. Or I had to get the sample for him. He had to run it. And this stuff right here says, on the paperwork right here, that... Right here it says, anti-stat must be added customer requires more than 2100 cu cubic units i guess uh but when he did the test on that sample i took out the top of the trailer it only come back as 60 60 anti-stat i asked the man what all this is for he said it's a mixture that goes into paint or something like that i don't know exactly what it was something to do to do with paint but uh, he said, yeah, we're going to get you to put this anti-stat in there. He had a jar of it. And the jar was probably about as big as round as a skull can. And it was probably about halfway full. And he said, I only want you to use half of that. So I only put like that much in the trailer. And uh, I had to pull up, back up, pull up, back up, pull up, back up. You know, sloshing it around up in there, get it mixed. And then I had to get it there again, sip another sample of it. And I walked in the building with him while he was sampling it. And like I said, the first sample was 60. 60 CU on the anti-stat. When we re-ran the uh, sample again, it come back over 2,700 CU anti-stat. So we're good. He got me finished hooked up. We're getting unloaded a day early, basically. He's like, well, you guys aren't supposed to be here till 6 in the morning. I was like... Man, I was already over here. These folks won't answer the phone for me. He's all right. It don't bother me at all. It's just what the boss man wants to do. So he called the big boss man dude. And he's like, yeah, go ahead and unload him if he's already here. So, hey, I got unloaded over here. Online, I've seen reviews of this place. And it's not, it's not no good reviews. But uh, they seem to done right by me. So I'm pretty sure when I do finally finish getting unloaded, he said it shouldn't take about 40 minutes. Look at that big old train up there. That bad boy is a scooting across there, son. Sucker's loud, too. <laughs> but anyways, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pull back up uh, right over there. So we're going to sit here and finish waiting on him to unload us. And then I'm going to get out, close my dome lids and stuff, because these folks here don't get on top of the trailer. That's that's all our job. Uh, but the rest of it, he has his own hose, his own pump, own everything. I ain't got to do nothing. Just sit here daughter done got back there she claims she's watching tv but she's probably gonna be doing like bella right there and going to sleep <laughs> well, she's watching tv back there oh man look at that old camaro sitting right there man that sucker got that thing cleaned up that thing is pretty But yeah, it's not a... Oh, they wouldn't let me have a camera out over here. They didn't even want me on the telephone if I was outside the truck. So that's why I didn't get really no footage over here. But as long as I'm in the truck, everything's fine. My honest opinion about this place right here is these folks right here is very, very, very nice. Uh, the man that unloaded me was, had a heart of gold. And... Uh, the lady I talked to on the telephone, she had a heart of gold and not a bad place right here. 
except tight, being very tight, being in the alleyways and stuff. And then they wanted me to do that turn around. Boy, that was uh, that was pretty tight. All right. Any of you drivers ever come over here to this place, you need to go into gate seven. Gate seven is the only way for the truck to go in. So just remember that if you ever come over here, you drive a truck and you ever come over here, gate seven. Stop at the gate, the guard will let you in, walk to his window, and then he'll tell you what to do. He, he gave me this little map right here of the place and if I can pick it up. He gave me this little map of the place right here and showed me exactly where I needed to be at. So, all right, y'all. We made it here to, uh, oh, good. Where we at? Where the loves? Where the loves not far from where we was at. We uh, got over here. We went ahead and got us a shower already, me and my daughter did, uh, because we needed two separate showers. Um, I got some rags in here. I'm gonna put down on my fuel tank. We needed two separate showers. And when we first pulled up, the parking lot right here slap full of trucks waiting to get fuel. So uh, we decided it'd be best just to go and get showers because they had like four showers available. So that's what we did. We went ahead and got showers done. Now we're going to get our fuel. Get our fuel taken care of. We've been sitting here waiting for a minute for fuel. I'm going to eventually take these uh, these uh, chains off that uh, cap out there. That way it won't be... Uh, that way I can take the the cap completely out and just see the appearance of the chain dragon making little fuel spots like that out there because i don't want to i don't want to mess my pretty painted tanks up I know one thing I keep forgetting about. I keep forgetting about death. But thankfully, it's got that humongous tank on it. And, uh, well, we didn't burn, but I have a tank of death off of that. I don't know how many miles it was. I didn't reset my, my uh, trip meter here. So we're going to reset that now. But, uh, Come on now, go back to next time I stop and fuel up, I got to remember to uh to get my death. Because if I don't remember to get death, we're gonna be on the side of the road with problems. <laughs> Alright, so uh Carnesville, Carnesville, Georgia is where we made it to. Uh, we still had another hour left on the clock that we could have rode, but uh, that would just put us right dead center of uh, Atlanta. And I'm not staying around Atlanta. I just don't do all that. So we uh, we parked up over here on the side of the parking lot behind some containers and stuff they got right here. We was parked right over there in the parking lot, but I moved over here because I, I don't I don't like truck stops. Uh, I, it's not me parking anywhere. It's well, who's gonna tear my hood off while I'm trying to sleep? That's why I don't like parking at truck stops. We was gonna stop at the state line coming in, but uh, we figured we'd just ride on down. Uh, 
and this is where we got to. Uh, so I'm letting Bella out. My daughter's in the truck, getting it all situated in. Uh, about to start heating up supper and stuff. All right, what we're gonna have for supper tonight, Sam? Some sausage, some hamburger patties tonight. No, ma'am. I think that's yours. Oh, that must have been. I must have got. That's that other jalapeno. Remember that other jalapeno we bought that time? She don't like jalapeno. Another thing too that I forgot to point out on that truck tour video was this little pull-out tray right here. It's got a little pull-out tray that you can set something on while you're riding down the road, you know, a passenger or whatever. Now, will I ever use that? No. No, I, I think that thing is pointless. But it's, it's a nice little feature that the truck, truck has. And uh, also back here in the back, it has this pull-out drawer right here. Take it on. Paper's going everywhere. I put my paperwork, some uh, extra paperwork and stuff in there to kind of just hide it all. But yeah, that's a pretty cool little thing right there too. But anyways, that's just a few more things I forgot to mention on our truck tour video, I believe. And uh, we're about to get off of here. We're about to uh, heat us up some supper and uh, kind of relax a little bit. We got about 10 and a half hours till we get back to Cotton Valley, uh, Calumet, Cotton Valley. We're going straight back over there and we're reloading the load right on top of what we got. We should be around there by 1.30 tomorrow, uh, depending on traffic, which we can start at uh, 3.30 in the morning, 2.30 Central Time. So we gotta be back over there by two o'clock Central Time to pick up our next load that's going up to Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna run up there on the fourth, unload on the fifth, and then turn around after we get unloaded, start heading on back to the house. But anyways, that's that's what our plan is for this evening. Not really much going on. Just just gonna sit here and eat us some supper and probably watch us a little TV or something like that. Just kind of relax a little bit and get us a little bit of sleep. I do hope y'all enjoyed this video right here. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And um, well, we'll talk to y'all in the next video. Y'all come back. We'll be headed back across there. Like I said, tomorrow is going to be nothing but driving. And then uh, once we get to the load rack, we're going to load, probably hunker down right there, do our 10, get up early, and uh, ride across there to, uh, to Louisville, Kentucky. We hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all have a blessing. Peace.